Good day everyone, this is Francis Joseph Salinia and here I'm going to talk about pointers and structures in C++. I'm already assuming you're familiar with pointers, arrays, and structures and this will be the first time that you'll encounter a combination of them. Let's have a review. Remember that structures are complex data types that can store multiple variables whether they're the same or different data types. The definition of a structure is as follows. You start with the struct, followed by the structure name, open curly braces, followed by the comma separated member list, ending with closing curly brace and the semicolon. We instantiate a structure by struct name, followed by the variable name semicolon. Unfortunately, unlike your normal variables or arrays, structures cannot be initialized. To access a member of the structure, you refer to the instance, the variable name, dot, and the member name. Let's have an example. Let's say I want to create a structure called point2d containing two variables, x and y, both being float. To instantiate this structure, we do it as such, point2d followed by the variable name, a. So a is our variable. To access its members, you can access the x of a by a.x. And to access the y of a, we use a.y. Now in memory, it looks like this. a is the structure containing two floats, x and y. In the statement, a.x is equal to 5, we put 5 here. And the next statement puts 10 here. Okay, now let's have pointers to structures. Pointers to structures are similar to pointers to other data type. To declare a pointer, you need the data type to point to, followed by the asterisk, the pointer name, and you can initialize it to the address of a variable of that data type. To access the members of the structures being pointed to, we can dereference followed by a dot. In memory, it looks like the following. A has two children, x and y, both being float, and B is a pointer to a struct point 2d and here it gets the address of a now we can dereference b followed by accessing the child x and assign it the value of 2 and same thing dereference b dot y is equal to 8 note that the dereference operator has a lower precedence than the dot operator meaning the parentheses are necessary without the parentheses it would be interpreted as such the dot will be followed first which will not make sense and will cause an error because b doesn't have a child now they simplified accessing the members of a pointer to a structure using the arrow operators. Now just give me a second here as I copy the previous memory representations of our structure and a pointer to the structure. There's the 2 and an 8. Now to simplify this statement, they created the arrow operator such that you can just use it like this. B, follow the arrow, it access child X and assign it the value of 2. The arrow operator is basically the combination of the dereference followed by the access member. And the beauty of this is that it has, it has the same precedence as the dot operator. Now let's have arrays of structures. So let's have the structure again, struct point 2 d having two children, x and y, both being float. Now let's create an array of struct point 2 d called square, which has a size of four. Now what does that look like in memory? So square, we start with the variable name, the array name, has four elements as you can see, each having x and y children. Thus in memory, it looks something like this. You have your four children, each having x and y, and each variable has a space. Now, which variable are we changing in the following statement? Square one dot y is equal to 100. So we follow the variable name square, then access the second child and access the child called y and give it the value of 100. Now what if we want to change this element to 50? What's going to be our statement? Following the diagram, it's actually easy. You start from the variable name, square, and this is found in the fourth element, so 3, access the child, x, and assign it the value of 50. Now let's go to something trickier. This is the more confusing part of pointers and structures. Let's have structures within structures and structures with pointers to structures. Let's have a new structure called line2d composed of two children, a point2d called point and a pointer to a line2d called next. Notice that I need to use the struct line2d in the definition of the struct itself. 
this is not allowed in C++ because the compiler will not know what a line 2D is. Remember that the definition is where the contents of the struct are defined. We solve this issue by telling the compiler that a struct line 2D exists and it will be defined later. This is what we call a forward declaration. It is quite analogous to functions where a function prototype tells the compiler that the function exists and its definition is what the function does. Now let's move on and create our first line 2D called line 01. In memory, it looks like this. It has two children where the first child, point, has two other children, x and y. Next is just a pointer and not the structure itself. And it can only point to variables of type line 2D. Question. Given the statement line 01.point.x gets the value of 10, which variable are we changing? We can easily follow this from the diagram. We start with line 01, get its child point, and get its child x, then assign it 10. Now what if we want to change this variable to 20? Again, we simply follow the memory representation. We start with line 01, dot point dot y gets the value of 20. Now let's add another line 2d called line 02. In memory it looks similar to line 01 but it's located somewhere else. Okay let me just draw that. Now what I want to happen is to connect line 01 and line 02 by making the next of line 01 point to line 02. In code, we assign to line 01.next the address of line 02. Remember that the next is a pointer which requires an address of a variable that it can point to. In this case, it's line 2D. Now that they're connected, I want to change this variable to 30 from line 01. We do this by starting from line 01.next arrow point dot y gets the value of 30. Now you might be asking, where is line 02? Let's look at the other form without the arrow. We start with line 01, dot next, the reference the whole thing, which is equivalent to line 02. Get its child point, then child y, and give it 30. The referencing while accessing its children is very confusing since we don't read it from left to right. Thus, I call it the ugly form. Let's get rid of that. Let's add another line 2D called line 03. In memory, it is located somewhere else, but it looks similar to line 01 and line 02. Let's connect line 03 from line 02.next. In code, that's line 02.next gets the address of line 03. For the fun part, let's assign this variable to 40 from line 01. Let's no longer use the ugly form and take advantage of the arrows instead. How do we do this? We start from line 01.next, arrow next, arrow point dot y gets 40. Now, that wasn't so crazy, right? Well, let's move on to our last topic. Let's have structures with array members. Let's have a new structure called shape2d composed of two children. The first is an integer n indicating the number of sides. And the second is an array of point2d called points with a size of 5. Let's create an instance of this new structure and call it shape. What does this look like in memory? Shape has two children, n and points. n is just an integer, so we can leave it. Point is an array with five elements, where each element is of type point 2D, meaning each element of the array has an X and a Y. This is how shape looks like in memory. Now, what is the statement if we want to change this variable to 50? Following the diagram, we start from shape, get the child points, access the second element, get the child x, and give it 50. Well, that's it for pointers and structures. I hope you learned much. 
This is Francis Serinha and good day.